Why, hello, hello kids. I have no idea why I look like a 30 year old with, I don't know, anemia. I am a 20 years old with anemia. Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a very interesting, let's, let's call it an experiment. I'm going to read three books that have been circulating in the TikTok sad girlies like lit fic uh, circles. Um, I've been collecting them morosely through the, all these months and yesterday I acquired the last one. You're going to see it in the vlog. This is me from the future. But um, yeah, I'm very, very, very excited about all three books with some considerations to make for one of them. First one, and I'm going to meet the author. So I hope I like this book. <laughs> this is... Um, yeah, the, the the book with the name that I cannot I cannot remember. Someday this play will be useful to you by Peter Cameron. Look at the beautiful Italian edition. Uh, everybody told me that this is sad, relatable, and very what do you would call in Italian a romanzo di formazione, which means that you see somebody growing up uh, or a really young teenager going through you know the motions of growing up. Uh, I think I will cry. I'm a cry at her heart especially when it comes to books. And I know that there's an old lady, like a sweet old lady in this book. So yeah, probably. This is the book that I acquired yesterday. I'm so happy. This is Alone With You in the Ether. Look, look, look at this edition that I snatched. It's not the original one with the, you know, the blank cover, but this is one of the prettier ones. Uh, it really cost me a lot for being an import book, like a, a paperback, but it was worth it for the gold foil and the bees. This uh, has been sold to me as a complicated love story between two people who you're not sure they should be together and they have a lot of problems but they ultimately like really love each other and I am a sucker for those stories so uh, I cannot wait I really like really really liked uh, The Atlas Six and also its sequel even though it was not as magical and I don't know I love Olivia's Blake writing and then the book I have Reservations with for I don't know I don't know English is hard. Um, this is Normal People by Sally Rooney in the beautiful Italian edition. I despised Conversation with Friends. I really think that that was not a book that was Sally Rooney talking about the stuff that she wanted to talk about through her characters in not a funny way. Um, this, uh, however, everybody told me that it's a lot more statistically probable that I'm going to like it. It's about two people that are kind of in love with each other, but they cannot get to a tangential point in time where they meet and they are right for each other. There's also a TV show that everybody loved. I don't know if Sally Rooney's writing is for me, not because she doesn't use quotation marks. I've read French authors, they don't use quotation marks, they are the worst. Yeah, yeah. So all three books. I'm really excited. I I don't know. Um, will I probably cry? Sh sure, sure, sure. Um, but these are all beautiful, and they're in a beautiful palette. And um, yeah, let's start now with someday this pain will be useful to you. Or no, maybe, maybe I'll. Hmm. Well, I'll let I'll let my past self decide. I cannot remember which I started first. <laughs> I don't know if this is the best lighting I could get. Can I see anything? No. <laughs> I have a loot to show you because one of these books among us I'm going to read in this vlog. Um, so first I went to my local comic book shop and I got two things. One, it's Stay Gold. It's a love story between two high school students. They're both young men. Um, it's described as an intense love story but i know the author uh, i've read their previous works and they've been awesome incredibly drawn the art style is beautiful and then <laughs> i know nothing about this manga aside from the fact that it's from the author of tokyo go and i had to get it and it's like it's so pretty and artistic and you never see this in a manga they usually come like this 
um, th this is a little bit more like an art book. And then I saw it. It was very expensive for being a paperback in English. Um, but I got Alone With You in the Ether. Look how pretty. Look how matchy matchy are we. Like the, the bees with my hair and the blue. I'm very happy about this. <laughs> so this is a lit fic kind of love story. He told me it was a love story between two people who are suffering from mental health problems. I don't know what that means uh, in terms of what type of mental health problem, but uh, apparently it's going to rip my heart out and I love Olivia Blake um, writing style. So uh, yes, I'm going to read this in this vlog. Okay, see you, bye! In an incredible turns of event, I've got book mail and it's very exciting. Um, it's the second volume of Heaven of Official Blessing by Mashon Tusho. Um, this is a Chinese web novel that got turned into a, a proper novel. I am, I am in love with this story. I'm so happy I got the second volume so cheap. I'm starting it. Is it a good idea for my mental state right now? Obviously not. Am I going to do it anyways? Yes. Once again, I look like absolute death. But I'm in the middle of uh, Alone With You in the Ether and I have complicated thoughts about this book because it talks about a mathematician, a, a theoretical mathematician who is obsessed with bees and hexagons, who I don't know if he's supposed to be autistic or if he just presents all the science. Um, and a girl who was supposed to be an artist but she gave it all up for a quieter life and uh, she's bipolar, so right now she is on one of the highs because she stopped taking her meds and I'm waiting for the crash. I am waiting because right now things are good. Um, they are falling in love, it's all very sweet, but I'm waiting for the crash because there are signs that it's going to become a, a mess and I don't know. In the beginning, when they were doing like this sex conversation thing, um, I really wanted them to stay friends. I think this would have been such a cool book if they had stayed friends, but it would have been another book, like not this one. Um, I would love a book about friendship between a theoretical mathematician and an artist. I would love to see it. <laughs> That's not flattering at all. I look like a corpse. Also, I plan on finishing this today and tonight starting someday with this pain will be useful to you the peter cameron book um and i don't know that one people told me it's really sad so we'll see you woke up for spring and now you're a menace why are you so angry all the time all this just to say that i finished the book and i'm i'm uh, conflicted as always, the lighting is incredibly crazy in my house. So, um, I finished Alone With You in the Ether. Uh, after reading the author's note, I feel like this is an incredibly personal story to the author. Um, one of the two protagonists has a bipolar disorder. Olive Blake was diagnosed with a bipolar disorder. And I don't know, this was not exactly a love story in the conventional way. It's about two people finding newness in each other. They fundamentally change after meeting each other in such a destructive and all-consuming way, which I would not recommend it to anyone. Not the book, the relationship, that kind of relationship. One of my friends started telling me, um, I'm seeing this person and this is their behavior. I would say, get out of it. That's not... I don't know, anchoring enough, calm enough, there's not a moment of calmness in this relationship, not truly. They're both so into their heads all the time and it's a tornado of thoughts 
all the time. It's also written very beautifully, but sometimes the floweriness of the writing is a little bit too much. Where I thought the Atlas X succeeded was making the writing very flowery, but still uh, not cringy and also still very elegant. Uh, here it's a little bit too much, especially towards the end, when I clocked that House Moving Castle reference, I clocked it. There's one right at the end. I still liked it. I think it's a 3.75 stars. Not a full 4 stars, but still very good. It did not make me feel as much as I would want it to. I feel like the best part of the book, though, was Aldo's relationship with his dad. This is just like an add-on to this review. Um, all the, the tidbits about Rinaldo Damiani, which is Aldo, uh, Italian heritage and history, especially the names, not accurate, like at all. Like his grandma's name, not Italian, not Italian, especially not historically accurate Italian. And the fact that his father is named Tommaso and they call him Masso, well, this man knows that in Italian Masso means rock, like a boulder. It was weird. It was weird reading about it, but it was so sweet. His father is the sweetest man in the world and I would love for everybody to have a father so gentle, so sweet as him, even though he was like a, a single father. So now I'm going to start what is this book title? Someday this pin will be useful to you by Peter Cameron. I'm going to meet Peter Cameron at an event in May, so I want to read this. And then, oh my god, oh my god, no. Then it's normal people time. I don't know what to feel about this, man. Uh, hopefully I can finish this little book uh, in a day. This lighting is crazy. I'm so sorry. It's kind of artistic, though. literally what the fuck what was that ending why did i spend the last two hours reading this fucking book to reach that ending i am so sad i can't even cry i'm just so sad okay i've collected my thoughts on the peter cameron book which has a title that I cannot remember for the life of me. It has a protagonist and it follows this protagonist in a, how, how should I say, a slice of his life? Not even like a lit fic per se, a slice of life anime in book form and it's extremely sad. This kid who is gay has a mother who has not the best relationship with men and he's constantly really, really angry about his life, about everything. Um, he's also very cynical. He disagrees with everyone. And in his head, because you're in his thoughts, right? Um, you can see that he does it just because he wants to pick fights. Um, and he sees this in himself and he wants to change, but he cannot. He doesn't want to go to university and all he wants to do is visit his grandma which is the only person he talks to and buy a house in the midwest and read and he doesn't believe in higher education he doesn't believe that people in university could be interesting he believes that all these people are like basically mindless sheeps yeah like i've met somebody just like you who was so disillusioned in his life so angry so sad and i don't know you just want the best for these people because they're clearly hurting and you don't get a real solution with this book the ending is very open and it's very sad i really hated it like hated the book the writing style the protagonist everything got on my nerve at the beginning and then the more you read it i was like glued to the page i read 200 pages in two hours <laughs> It's like unprecedented, even for me. I think it really impacted me. I cannot stop thinking about it. But I have to stop thinking about it or else I'm going to get really sad. So, 
I did the thing. I started normal people. Um, so far, I am on page 26. It's a little bit of a slower read than Peter Cameron, but I am very famous for hating Conversation with Friends by Sally Rooney. Um, I think that book failed on all aspects of being a book. It was not only boring and frustrating, uh, it was also just like very clear in my mind that Sally Rooney just wanted to write newspaper articles about capitalism and borders and instead just wrote a novel about people sometimes talking about it, sometimes just taking the worst path in life and not in an entertaining, interesting way, just like in a very boring and mundane and flat way. This book, however, is proving to be more interesting. It's definitely better, The Conversation with Friends. I am mildly interested in this character. I'm going to finish this, if not, not today, but tomorrow. And then we'll do a little bit of a wrap up because I'm getting really sad. Th these are all sad books, kind of. This is more melancholic. Alone with You in the Ether was very sad. Um, and then, I don't know, man, <laughs> someday this pain will be useful. That book destroyed me because I cannot bear with old people in books being super sweet. I cannot, I cannot. So I finished um, Normal People, wait, yes, I finished it. I sound dead because of morning allergies, but I just finished this book. I read up until like page 228 yesterday in the boat, and then I finished the last three pages today. And I think I've never been so disappointed in an ending of a book, like ever. Those last three pages were awful. Were there just to make you upset. And they felt like Sally Rooney didn't know how to end a story constructed like this. Like a, a never ending cycle. Um, and she chose the easy way out. Like a cop out. And those last three pages I would love to rip out. Because they were awful. This is infinitely better than Conversation with Friends. Infinitely better. I don't know why the the two books get even compared together. These characters were like real people. Conversation with Friends character were two-dimensional, flat, boring. These are real people. They make real mistakes. Um, this does not make it any less frustrating to read. I also especially last night in which I read like the last 100 pages, um, felt a deep sense of nothing. It's that this book gave me nothing. It was not a melancholic feeling. It was not like a sad feeling that Alone With You in the Ether gave me. I don't love the story. I don't love the characters. They're not supposed to be lovable. But then what is in this story? People said, oh, these characters are so relatable. No, they're not. No, they're not. They are made to be frustrating. Um, just like some people are really frustrating. Uh, but it does not make it pleasurable to read it in a story. Because they make the same exact mistake from beginning to end. They never learn. They never grow. Especially those last three pages really made me think they did not grow from page 10 to 200. Um, so this is a vast improvement, thank you construction, but still not good. Okay, oh no, oh my hair. I've just taken a shower, so uh, maybe do not look at it. The challenge is finished, I've read Normal People. I think I will give it a three stars. It was going to be a 3.5, round it up to four, but then that ending was kind of awful. Let's do a little recap. Firstly, I read Alone With You in the Ether. I really appreciate the author's writing. I really loved it in the Atlas X. But here, I felt like it was 
like in the younger version of the writing that was in the Atlas 6, which makes sense because she wrote this uh, as an earlier version and the Atlas 6 got traditionally published before this one. It was interesting, definitely, possibly the most interesting book that I've read in this challenge, but it left me with a sense of I'm finished. I would have really appreciated, I, I, I know I've said this before, but if they had stayed friends, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10 story. I would have loved if their transformation as they go through the story would have begun as them meeting as friends and staying as friends. I don't know, I don't know what to rate this story. I think, I think a 3.75 said, yeah, that, that feels correct. And then I read the Peter Cameron book. I'm not going to say the title, I cannot remember it for the life of me. Sad, that filled me up with dread. Cause I know people like uh, our protagonist, James. Uh, gay, queer, filled with anger, with parents that don't care about him, a sister that really treats him poorly actually, um, and he's so disillusioned with society and his future. And there's also the thing that the title comes from a line uh, on a pamphlet uh, that James' mother sees uh, about a camp uh, if you've seen the hashtag breaking coded silence on the internet, you know what I mean. These were wilderness camp for troubled teen. They kidnap these kids that are really troubled, really sad, uh, possibly with some neurodivergency, and they bring it into the desert or some wilderness camp and they get treated so poorly, they get beat up, they get verbally abused. It, um, Paris Hilton uh, recently stated that she went to one of these camps and it was awful, awful. And the protagonist tells this and the, the, the title, Someday This Pain Will Be Useful To You, I remembered it, uh, comes from one of these pamphlets and then he never talks about it again. Which I think, I don't know if it had to symbolize the fact that he blocked all of it, um, but it was just kind of bizarre. Very realistic, it was very sad. Uh, it had kind of an open ending, which I mean, did not enrage me as much as this one, but still, uh, I think a four star rating is correct. And then we come to this, normal people. Um, as I've said many times before, infinitely better than conversation with friends. I've said all that is to be said about this book, despise the ending, giving it a three star. What have I learned from this experiment? Do I trust the sad lit fic girlies on TikTok? Kind of, kind of and kind of not. I think um, the more that I do these experiments, the more it's clear that I actually don't really take these recommendations of like, oh yeah, I saw it, I buy it. I, I actually wanted to read these books. This is why I'm not going into a slump <laughs> doing these experiments, but the general collective taste that is on TikTok, I think it's not really made for me. I'm not saying I'm not like the other girls. I'm not even a girl. <laughs> I'm saying that the popular choices uh, that people make, especially from ranging from lit fic to romance, I don't think they're for me. I think I should trust more of my instincts and that is why <laughs> Next time you're going to see me with one of the most popular books to ever existed, which means it's Shadowhunters time, baby, next time on this channel. Um, I would love for you to comment which one of these three was your favorite book and to check out maybe my social, I've got a Goodreads and a TikTok. Uh, it's a fun time on TikTok, really. Um, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye! Mwah.